Hello, everybody. Welcome to my office at, I want to say, it's Whitewood Realty. Uh, this is my realty business. I've been working here. I've been CEO of this place, actually, for about, you know, a good 14 years. Yep, Whitewood Realty. Greater Vertoac City Area. Now, this is a city someone else built, not me, called Vertoac. And it's very, uh, it's a very nice building. Or, city. It's a very nice build. And it is a city. And there's tons of buildings in the city. There we go. Cleared that up for you. Um, and I am a real estate agent in it. Not really, but we can pretend. But the name of this series that I'm starting right now is going to be called Project Suburbia. And you might be able to tell from the title that we are going to be building a suburb of Vertoac. Um, it is my job as a realty CEO to try to get as much money as I can for the company. And so I'm opening up a new suburb in the area of Vertoac for um, residents and businesses. And the only problem is there isn't a suburb, and that is what this project is. It's going to be a survival building project. So all I've started with currently, presently, is nothing. I've got a house and a bookshelf with some fancy shelving or something on it. But I've got this nice little house, and I've got my real estate company. That's all I've got. Now, I'm allowed to roam the city and find stuff. Um, because, like, most buildings have items and chests and junk in them. So, yep. Yeah. This is my apartment complex. It was the first part of my real estate business. There's some decent stuff here. As I said, you can find something anywhere. This map. Oh, what is this? I haven't actually been in this room. Strange. What happens if I pull this lever? It always goes with that piston. Oh. Alright, well, I'm not sure what this is meant to do. I'm gonna admit, it's kind of confusing me. That's a light switch. <laughs> but we'll just leave this be for now, because I'm not sure what it is. But, let's get right to work. We're not gonna build, start building today. We're just gonna pretty much go on a tour of the city. I'll show you how to get to our destination, though. Um, we walk down this way. Actually, I need to set the right game mode. We're going to play on the easy. Actually, we should go to the plaza first, which is like a store. It's market, pretty much. If we head over this way, there's a meat stand, I believe, around the corner. It's downstairs, I believe. See if I'm right. Maintenance. We don't need maintenance. There it is. The meat stand. And they've got some food. Alright. That'll do. Oh, there's a wild pig. Alright, so we've got all kinds of stuff here. There's too many things to go through. I'll probably do a whole ton of work off camera because of all the stuff in the city. I'll do some exploring. Now, of course, I've done a little bit of creative work. I don't know if you could tell, but that apartment that I'm living in used to be four apartments spread across two floors. It's not one big one, and they used to be fully decorated. Now they are not. Um, oh gosh, we should probably do something about mobs. Let's see. This is strange. <laughs> this guy's overloading his fancy generator just to keep the lights on. That's special. Oh, in case you didn't know, that missing texture is a dead bush. They're not meant to be planted on grass, I guess, or something. It's a snapshot bug. Yeah, we definitely need to find a weapon. 
We definitely need to light up everything. This is just a brick store. Oh, everything in here is blue. I think they even have... Oh, actually, that's a thought. They have blue stuff. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. The, but the main point of the series isn't to survive, it's to build. So, I'm not afraid to take stuff. <laughs> Alright, here we go, we're charging. Oh, I'm lagging a whole ton. Ooh, ouch. Being shot in the back. Alright, um, kind of going the wrong way. There's the apartment building right there. But, right now, I want to give you kind of a story. This episode's going to be all about the story behind the town of Vertoac. I don't know if I'm ever going to remember the name. I think it's Vertoac, though. We'll try to remember that. But if we head down this way, we can find the subway station. At least that's what I'm calling it. It's just a rail. <laughs> um, and for some reason, it doesn't extend into this area, which appears to be downtown. So, I don't really understand it. Oh, and since I lag so much, I gave myself permission to clear weather. That's the only command I'm allowed to use, though. So. <laughs> um, right over here, we're going over this train right now, and we're at the station. Now if we head this way, we get to Old Town, which is where the city first started. It's a little bit more old school type buildings. I don't think it's this station, it's the one after. Yeah, or the one after, the one after. But it's at the end of this line. Nope, this is it. This is Old Town. And here, we've got a library. Libraries where all the magic happens. Here we go. I've already read these. And we should start with reading human history. Past history, classic alpha. As far as we know, the world has always existed, but the people have not. The first humans to set put set foot on the plane were the classics. They possessed the power to create matter out of thin air. The laws of gravity only applied when they found it to be appropriate. Much of the land was formed from their era of creation. Next came the survivalists. Matter was alterable, but not spawnable. They were confined to the laws of gravity. Though their works are not as impressive as the creatives, their builds can still be seen today in our great city. Many remain, though their numbers are dwindling. The creatives and the survivalists often did not get along, and due to the creationists' power and invincibility, caused the survivalists to relocate many times. This was an even more common occurrence during the great creative rebirth. The last of the peoples were the adventurers. Their abilities were not were extremely limited. Not only could they not fly, but they could not alter blocks at all, slash nearly as easily as the other groups. Adventurers make up at least 78% of the global population. 21% of the population is made up of survivalists, and alone 1% is creatives, whose location are kept unknown and secret. In 1965, the last publicly known creative was trapped in the end by two other groups. Since then, no other creatives have come forward with their powers, if they exist, as the population of survivalists dwindle due to the non-dominant game mode zero gene. Most of the population began to work towards perfecting machines. The invention of pistons has greatly increased the abilities of adventurers to alter the face of the world. And that's pretty much the story behind the humankind in Vertoac and in Minecraftia. In the early foundings of the city, and at a time in which there were a few creatives helping with construction, the area began to form into factions. These factions were not based upon race, but upon opinion. Each group had a similar ratio of survivalist adventures and about three, four, three to four creatives. In the early foundings of the city, 1890-1940, three select groups of people were split upon the future of the city. While the groups never took any official names, they were identified by their ideas. One group wanted the city to be locked away. They felt there were enough people that they could hold out until the end of time safely and to stop allowing refugees to enter the construction. The second group wanted to permit the 
acceptance of immigrants from the wilderness for bands of survivalists and adventurers, the third group was opposed to both ideas. On January 15, 1937, culminations of tensions resulted in Starter's Day, the only day recognized with act war movement. On Starter's Day, two of the major groups seized control of the city's main nether portals and threatened to use them to tear hole in space and time, possibly destroying and corrupting the world. After the st stalemate of mutually assured destruction, tensions eased following the creative's abandonment of all their parties. I think it's supposed to be of all their parties. Starter's Day is considered the last day of the Starter's War and the first day of the creative genocide. Starter's War also gets its name from the Nether Portal State Mate. I think that's supposed to be stalemate. At any time, either group could have started the end of the world. Many underground shelters still exist as abandoned remnants of the day the world could have started to end. Well, that's the story behind Baratowak. This is actually the library of Baratowak. Baratowak City Library. We'll take these books with us. Why not? And that's pretty much episode one. Um, we'll get to work with some other stuff uh, next episode, but I just wanted to tell you guys really what my plans are for everything. I think this is Old City. Hold on. Hmm, interesting. This must be, an, this must be a suburb. Ours is going to be better than this suburb tenfold. Yeah, I've already got a, a spot planned out for the suburb. I just don't have any buildings there yet. I haven't actually been over here yet. We'll just explore real quick. I've explored almost the whole city. It's taken me hours, but I know where almost everything is. I've even found the end portal, but I can't. We're going to wait for a long time. Because they said that they saw, um, that there's the last cr known creative was in there. So, we'll wait. And we all really know what that was about. Um, creatives were people in creative mode. I think for Toak, it was like telling the story of a server, to the best of my knowledge. Jebediah Farm.